today's video I'll be showing you a simple method in checking for any refrigerant leaks at your condensing unit. The most common area that you're going to find where you have generally most of your leaks are going to be here at your king valves. Generally the Schrader valves inside end up drying out the little gasket or seal. Here you can see this is what a Schrader valve actually looks like and this is what's inserted here inside of your little valve and basically that little black gasket or seal over time as I said it just starts to dry out and allows for the refrigerant to slowly seep out. Here we have a close-up and you can see that the valve just kind of just sits right inside. Generally most of the calls that I receive come from one of two places and generally 80% of the time it's going to be your Schrader valve or your King valve. A lot of times in my experience what I will encounter is if you have an inexperienced technician what they'll do is they'll get a call for a condensing unit that's not working properly or efficiently and what they'll do is they'll come they'll put their gauges on the system they'll see the refrigerants low and then they'll just top it off not really considering or diagnosing as to why the refrigerant was low in the first place for instance this unit was already worked on by a technician and they charged the system up with the refrigerant for this condensing unit and three days later I received the call that the system was not operating or functioning properly. Here I have two separate gas leak locators or detectors and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of the solution and then I'm going to apply a little bit onto the Schrader valve now, if the Schrader valve starts to show any indications that it has a leak, you'll see bubbles starting to form uh, at, the, at the front here, at the base of the King valve. Here you just dip it in, and now, you can see that it is starting to bubble very slightly, which indicates we have a very small leak. Here, I prefer using this fluorescent one because when you're working out in the field, sometimes the sun is at its peak of the day and it'll actually just blind you so you won't be able to see it. So here with the fluorescent one, you can see that it's already starting to bubble over. So that tells me that I do have a leak here at the Schrader valve. Now another place that you want to check for leaks is going to be at the top of the king valve. These also have a seal if you remove this cap. These also have a rubber gasket here that also I've seen many times dry out. And you basically do the same type of test. You would take your uh, leak detector, obviously your gas, and you would just kind of just fill it up here on top. And if there was a leak, you would see that it would start to actually bubble over. Right now it's not, so this tells me I do not have a leak here. But a lot of times, as soon as you put this on there, it'll just start to bubble over and foam over, and then you'll know that the leak is here on top. Now you're gonna do this procedure both on the high and the low side. Here I have my Schrader valve removal tool. There's many different ones. You may have a lever, some have a little uh, ball. But basically, you just tie one end onto the valve. You don't have to over torque it. To do that, you're basically just going to put this and press it in. And what I like to do is whenever I'm using my Schrader valve removal tool, I like to slowly tighten the valve first just to make sure that I actually grab the valve. And then what I'll do is I'll slowly, keeping pressure inwards, I'll slowly just kind of rotate it until the lever pops out. Once you remove the Schrader valve, you'll feel like a slight click and then you'll just let it pop out like that and then you should have a lever here and that will actually close the line from allowing the uh, extra refrigerant that's in the system to escape. Now I'm simply going to remove 
this top portion and the Schrader valve should be at the end of the tip. Here I have my new Schrader valve and basically we're just going to put it in, we're going to close this up. And then I'm going to open the lever and then push in and rotate clockwise to uh, put my Schrader valve back inside the King valve. Now that we have the new Schrader valve in, we're going to perform our leak test. You can see the solution is foamy, but it's not bubbling over like it was before. You'll just see bubble like just forming at the base. So right now we have eliminated the leak. Lastly, if you do replace the Schrader valves, here is the cap that was on the system. You can see it's already starting to crack here at the base. It's just, at this point, very brittle. What I, what I would recommend is placing it with a brass cap. And you can see these have an actual little rubber gasket or seal inside. They're just very efficient and effective in just protecting against the elements. video was a help. If it was informational, please subscribe.